Baba yetu na Mungu wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunasongea mbele zako tena tukilibariki na kulinua jina lako tunakutukuza asubuhi njema kwa maana umekuwa mwaminifu umekuwa Mungu mwema Mungu ambaye umejidhihirisha kwetu kwa njia tofauti Asante Bwana kwa kutuleta katika nyumba yako hata sasa tuko na ta, uh, utayari wa kwenda kuwaza ibada hii baada yetu ya pili. Bwana Yesu, tunaomba ya kwamba ukashiriki pamoja nasi katika jina la Yesu kama ilivyo neno lako. Ya kwamba mahali wawili au watatu wamekusanyika katika jina lako utakuwa mahali pale. Basi tutie nguvu katika huduma hata ndani ya ibada hii katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunapokusifu Bwana tukakusifu jinsi unavyofurahia. Tunapoabudu tukafanye hivyo Bwana. Tunapokutolea na kufanya yote Bwana, wacha utukufu ukaweze kurudi kwako katika jina la Yesu. Twanyenyekea mbele zako Kristo Yesu na kuomba ya kwamba ukatusamee makosa yetu, ukatusafi Kristo Yesu ili tunapokuabudu Bwana, tukakuabudu kutoka kwa mioyo yetu, mioyo safi, vyombo safi ambavyo vimekumbalika mbele zako. Bwana Yesu tubariki katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Hata wanao tufuatilia mtandaoni Bwana Tunaomba neema ya kutosha kwa ajili yao. Unapotubariki Kristo Yesu kutana na mahitaji yao. Onekana kwa ajili yao katika jina la Yesu. Asante kwa uaminifu wako. Asante kwa ukuu wako. Asante Bwana maana utatabalaki. Wale ambao wako njiani wakija kwa ibada hii. Yesu arekisha miguu yao ili kwa pamoja tukaweze kubarikiwa. Asante kwa kuwa wewe ni Mungu. Asante kwa sababu utachukua nafasi ya kwanza na utaweza kutawala na kutuongoza. Yote tumeomba tukiamini katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Amen. Good morning. Good morning once more. Karibuni sana kwa ibada yetu. Just want to thank God for each one of us. How was the week? How was the week? It was a nice one. Comprising of Vitukosio. That is life. That is life. Now, as Africans, when I look around, I don't see Mzungwa. We are all Africans. And so, when the word freedom is mentioned, freedom, There is a certain freedom that comes into our minds. The freedom we acquired from our colonizers. One time, I want to believe that uh, if anyone was there in this house right now, anyone, when I look around, I cannot see more than, more than, more than, more than, let me see. Can I guess the ages of my congregants? Yes, I can tell. Probably except one, or even two, labda kama siju wale wakopali. Let's say maximum of two people, two, three. We were born most of us, majority, were born after the freedom was acquired. When I hear of what happened then, I don't get good stories. When I read, you know, write-ups stating 
anything about what happened to Africans, not just Kenya alone. Things were not good. And so, by that period, we had been slaves, kind of. We were colonized. And it is very sad to state that we lost lives. In Kenya, up to thousands. When you talk of Africa, the whole of Africa, we must have lost millions. But today, today, we are free. Our colonizers went back. So we live in freedom. We live as a people who have been set free. In fact, we attained self-rule, independence. In fact, that is what we were celebrating the other day in Kenya, 1st June. Because this was attained on 1st June 1963. We had been colonized way back, you know, from 1920, if I'm not wrong. So we had the celebrations all over, but the president was leading the same in Kisumundala. But again, a question goes in my mind, flashes in my mind, time and again. Are we independent? Are we free? Could it be we send away the colonizers and in a way we colonized ourselves? You know, there are people who have talked about that kind of aspect. Among them is one of my heroes currently, Biela Lumumba. He talks about that very much. And he cites guys who were there before. People who rooted for African freedom, African oneness. And I like one person from Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara. This is a guy who has been described as a, you know, Pan African, Pan Africanist. He really, he really tried his best, beginning from Ama with his country, to to encourage ourselves towards oneness as a, as a continent. I like somewhere he said, or something he said here, I wouldn't quote the words verbatim, but he was talking about debts. When you are in debts, You are like a slave to the one who has given you that debt. He was saying, debts put one into financial slavery. You are colonized if you are in debts. This morning, I'm not following that thread. And look here, friends, the same way we were slaves to sin, we were under the control of sin. But Christ came 
and set us free. And so right now, as I talk to you this morning, I'm talking to a people who are now enjoying what I will call Christian freedom. Somebody help me shout Christian freedom. Christian freedom. But again, as we enjoy, let us not forget our memory verse last Sunday. What was it? Memory verse. Aye, let's go. Memory verse. First Corinthians 10, 12. So if you are... Sorry? So if you think you are standing... Somebody is not reciting. Let's go together. So if you, are, you think you are standing... So if you think you are standing firm... Be careful... That you don't fall. This freedom... Was and is costly. Just like... It was very costly to us as Africans to attain the freedom we enjoy right now. That freedom costed lives. And for those who did not die, they lost. Some of them were imprisoned. I cannot... You know, you know, when I think about how they were imprisoned because we were not there. You know, one guy comes into mind. And this is Nelson Mandela. He was in prison for 27 years. Not six. Like for the Capeguria, you know, six. 27 years. If I ask those who are 27 and above in the house right now, you'll be surprised we'll be like 50-50. 50 will be standing and 50 will be, you know, percent will be seated. Like here, 27. So for 27 years, somebody, you know, went into prison. Not because of his own interest, but for the interest of others. But thank God that by 1990, he was released. The same way, it was very costly for us to attain our freedom, Christian freedom. It costed the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, because we cannot thank him enough. In fact, there is, I do not have, I don't, I don't, I've never come across any word sufficient to appreciate the Lord for the freedom he acquired on our behalf. I, they are not there. There's no word. What is there is only to make sure that you and me while we live in this freedom, we do not abuse it or even misuse it. Christian freedom. This morning, I want to talk about Christian freedom. And this is another series altogether. But let me focus on what this freedom is not. Christian freedom, specifically what it is not. Christian freedom is about living free from the power and the control of sin. Evil. It is not the right to do what we want. We are not free as believers to do whatever we choose.
Just like as a country, even if we have self-rule, we have independence. That does not allow us to do what I choose, what you want. But it is the ability to do what we ought to do as Christians. And anyone who is born again, like I say, has this freedom. The Corinthians had it, but they did what they wanted with it. They misused the freedom. They abused the freedom. Just like I said, Christians have a lot of privileges. And one of the privileges is this thing we are calling Christian freedom. The point is, it is there, it is given. Once you become a believer, you have it with you. But the point is, don't misuse it. Don't abuse it. Like the believers at Corinth were doing. So this morning, the question is, what, you know, Christian freedom is about, but focusing on what it is not for the time being. What it is not. This is what we get from the account in chapter 10, verse 14, to the end of the chapter, and verse 1 of chapter 11. It has been read to us by Leon. Leon. I have only two things to mention here, and I finish. Number one, Christian freedom is not a license for idol worship. Thank God today, to Namalizana na mambo ya wabudu wa sanamu. We have had it since chapter 8. Way back in March. Talking about idol worship. Mtu anaweza kuuliza hapo. Na nini watungaji? Kwa ni ya muna ujumbe mwingine? We are following the word here. We are bound. And again, a preacher was invited in a church. He preached a message. He was invited again. He came and preached the same, same message was invited the third time. He came and hammered the same, same message. And people were asking, Wani, hata kama ni roa na peana, ujumbe. Why preach one message every time you're invited here? And the preacher humbly asked, How can I move on? And get another message for you people. While you have not heeded to the first message. So if you invite me again. If I get another opportunity. I will still come and preach that message. So the Lord has something with us. The Lord must be saying something here. Repetition, yeah, emphasis. Even if this emphasis is not on us, there could be one, two, three people here, the Lord is talking to them. And you know the Lord doesn't have to single out them and take them behind here. He speaks. You know, I mean, so this morning, two things. About what Christian freedom is not about. You know, it is not a license for idol worship. Secondly, it is not a license for individualistic lifestyle. Let's go. The first point. Worship, you know, Christian freedom is not what? A license to? You are looking at me. As if you're wondering, where was this man? Christian freedom is not a license for idol worship. Secondly, Christian freedom is not a license for 
individualistic lifestyle. In other words, unselfishness. And so, chapter 10, verse 14 to 22. Paul tells the Corinthian believers just one simple thing. And that simple thing is what the Lord says to us this morning. Tells them, verse 14, flee, flee from idolatry. Idolatry, we have explained. She explained about it. I explained about it. And I want to remind you, it is that thing that takes the place of God in your life. You give it first priority. It may be a thing. It may be a person. Paul is confident that they will recognize, you know, recognize that what he is saying here is common sense. Verse 15. He speaks of, you know, participating idolatry. You are serving two masters. You are participating as a believer in the feast of demons. That's what he calls it. The cup of demons. And yet when you come to church, you are participating in the Lord's table. And you are comfortable. You are, you know, it's like nothing happens. We find believers participating in some horrible activities. Evil things. And on Sunday morning like now. They are seated there. Lifting their hands. To the Lord. And worshipping him. Like nothing happened. They are, they are comfortable. Even if what they did yesterday, even this morning, is mentioned from the pulpit, there's nothing to them that happens. No remorsefulness, no feeling of sorry. Believer's conscience is there. Somebody's there. He knows where he spent the night, where he was last week. But because that was then, now it is time to worship God. Some of them go with a verse. Ambayo in a type of Malikwing. Kaisari mpe chake alafu mungu fanya nini? So ukiwa kule inche, kule mtani, kule kazini, you are out kumpatia kaisari kile chake. Na unampatia fully. Just like these guys and even the Israelites worshipped idols forgetting about what the Lord had done to them. Paul is saying here to the believers while the Lord says to us all that flee idol worship. Shout flee from idol worship. The two cannot be compatible. You cannot be a worshipper of the Lord. And there is like a God you also worship. And some believers have to idols, not to altars, pale nyuman, pale kazin. Flee. I will not dwell on this. Because it is dangerous. What does verse 12 say? The warning that Paul gave to these believers. He said this. When we do such, we participate in, 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 in idol worship. And at the same time, we are worshippers who participate specifically in the Lord's table. What are we doing? We are let me read verse 22. The Bible says, Are you? No, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put myself inside. Like Paul did here. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? 
Jealousy. Jealousy. The Lord does not share his glory with anyone. Anything. So when you are worshipping, when you are giving priority to that which you hold with high regard, ignoring what the Lord demands of you, then you are arousing the anger of God. In fact, jealousy, this points to God's wrath and anything can happen to you because you never know what God decides for you. So it's a warning. So today, believers, we should run away from idolatry. What are we talking about? We are talking about that desire for wealth that drives you and drives us believers to anything. We can do anything in order to get riches. This includes bribing with some others even going to Wagangas. Some get you know, they are involved in some form of witchcraft where others are demanded to give sacrifices in order for them to become rich. Somebody in the church and they are all in positions and yet this person knows I sacrificed my dad, I sacrificed my mom, I sacrificed my son, I sacrificed my brother for me to become this rich. I know I'm talking about a frog. And you watch those things and then you think that these things are not realistic. They are practical in Africa. They are happening. They are happening. So somebody, because of that desire, you worship, you know, you worship wealth. You are ready to go to any length as long as you become rich. Cultic movements, they are here with us. They come and promise you prosperity. And because you have been here, your church doesn't talk about how you can become you, you can be, you can you can become this and that, you can acquire this and that. Then you decide to join that cult. Satanism. It is there. It is there with us. In fact, our children are joining devil worship. They are recruited by their friends. They are even, you know, some of them are recruited by their seniors. Including even some teachers. And we have very many reports. I was in a camp somewhere and I prayed with a, with a boy who narrated to me everything. What happened? How their head teacher recruited them into this with other boys and what they did. He told me many things, including how they come, you know. They cause accidents because they are looking for something having been sent by, by their leader, Buko. Illuminati. Very famous today. We hear of big people joining this. We hear of artists. Some of them who are appearing in the media all over. They have joined this thing we are calling Illuminati. Worship of idol. Well, what they get there, they are they're just looking for money. They are looking for, for, for power. They are looking for fame. One thing I know about politics, just little. The guys are preparing now. Those who are looking for seats. Those who are looking for positions. Between now and probably January, March. They will be traveling all over to that Muganga. When it comes to you, 
wewe unapokea pesa ukifikiri kwamba ni pesa tu ya kukula unajui kwamba zimewekwa kuna mama ma spirit zimewekwa huko ili ukila basi hata kama utaamua kupigia yule mwingine utajipata umempigia huyo believers wa kristo wanya kuna wa kristo katika nyumba mliteke eh Useme he believers listen to me carefully the lord is giving a warning here there's a lot of witchcraft and this is not perpetuated by heathens alone it is perpetuated by us believers walk to any mganga today and i'm i don't preach about mganga i don't preach about these things i'm preaching about it because it is here I don't like talking about it because when you talk about it so much it's like you're glorifying it. Na ile kesi ya nyoka aliyeponyoka. It has been translated the proper the witchcraft. Yes, it may be. Because somebody was saying I normally follow the comments. Huyu jamaa kuna mahali alikula vya wenyewe na akatoroka so jamaa mwenyewe akatuma higo but again it brings a lot of questions because that thing has never happened a higo flying over her car the car is moving and then nyoka anaponyoka anakuja vizuri ana land kwa gari anaingia what is that and they are talking of an association they are form inaitwa mwingi snake droppers association and i read one comment if you want to, to do away with your enemy come they are offering this but for piv you know vips i will say pivs vips They are saying they hope far to drop a crocodile. We go VIP is one enemies were kubwa. Well, I may not say it witchcraft or not. But again, let us not associate anything. You know, whenever we see anything happen, we associate it with witchcraft. A friend of mine who is late who helped me somewhere alikuwa anatajwa na maneno kama hayo huyu mzee huyu ana majini ana kadhalika na unajua and then one day there was a brother who went to visit with him and it became late and then he was accommodated he was given a certain room and when in the middle of the night he heard some noise He, he listened and all of a sudden he put on the lights they were not far from where he was and then he saw a person moving from this end to the other end when he begins to rebuke it because he was born again and i believe he is right now because he was he was believing now he was now confirmed oh kumbe kile kinasema ni ukweli now how can a person move by itself it nothing is moving it by itself it's moving from this corner to the other one when he begins to to talk it stops a short moment it begins to move And I tell you that brother really prayed and rebuked the devil. He bound the devil. He put him in a sack and threw him to the bottoms of the sea. That kind of nonsense. That is not our work. We are taught to resist not to bind. And this thing was not stopping. And because he was almost despairing, 
he chose to go and see what is happening. Akainua karaya hivi na paka akakimbia. Paka wa kawaida. What happened is alipitia labda uko juu. Akijurisha kule chini akaja kuangukia karaya na karaya ikamfunika. I know you understand what I'm talking about. It happens. So whatever you see, however ugly it is, don't always associated with either witchcraft or anything like that. Some of the things are very normal. You only needed to go and lift that paka and zake yalal. So he took hours rebuking akarai na paka tu. Friends, these things are there. We are false prophets. Persons we hold in high regard. We hold them in, you know, as our heroes. That's how you find somebody is ready to die for another because you love him. You want to follow him. I remind, I'm reminded of a girl in Nairobi. There's this musician who came in Kenya some years back. This was in the news. I don't know. Sean. Sean. Oh, Sean Paul. I don't know. Sean Paul, I'm going to meet a Shian Paul. So this girl, you know, she loved this guy, this musician. And because he was having a concert somewhere in Europe, his heart was there. She was ready to go, to attend. But when the parents denied her the chance, she committed suicide. I think what happened last Saturday, but one is fresh in our minds. Now this boy from somewhere who called, he wanted to go and watch Chelsea and Man U. Man U and Man City. I, you know, I, my parents, I only want to go and watch and come back, but he was denied. What did he do? The room where the parents had closed him in, he committed suicide. How many suicides have we had? Have they been reported? Not forgetting there are many others which have not been, you know, identified. A team play. Wewe ni Manu, wewe ni Arsenal. Arsenal, you wana enda na hii. Wengine wana bet. Well, you know, and at the end you lose and then you commit suicide. That is a form of worship. That is a form of worship. Hata kama ni kupenda, si upende kama kawaida. I told you here, Chelsea is my team and I cannot die for Chelsea. I cannot. One time in 2002, I was in college. World Cup. And this day, you know, this time World Cup was happening in Japan. Japan for soccer fans. Actually not fans because fans ni wakawaida. There are those we call soccer die hard. Die hard, huh? That word. I remember very well because it was my final year. And I happened to, to be in Mombasa. I was worshipping at LC Tudor. That day, because Japan is ahead of us in terms of time. So the game, the games were playing during the day. So game ilikuwa ya hawa nani? Hawa, 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 hawa jamaa wa West Africa. Senegal. Na wengine. I'm telling you, that day, kanisa ilikuwa most tupu. Na sana sana wanaome. Si unajua hiyo? Wanaome. Thank God my pastor Jimmy, by then, Come and have fresh kabisa. He knows, brother Mutangili. You may have been there. I'm a Mutangili. I'm not going to watch your game. Sikubuki lakini yoni yako. He mentioned, why did you miss church? Manini muli na na tuleshinda, na tumeshinda. So we we got the report of our win to kiwa kanisa. So guys. Mungu apewe blessing. 
This is to these people. You have a ministry. You have a responsibility in the church. And you know you are not here all the time. But whoever ukipatikana na jambo lako because priority you give to other things. Hii ya mungu, hii ya kanisani, haani, by the way. I want to challenge you. If you are that kind of a person, you will better leave that responsibility to be taken by other people. Because people, you know, the church is not in luck. God does not lack people to do his work. Munasikia kina mama wa chama, eh? Tuko pamoja kina mama wa chama, na mekutano yu munakuwa nae. Give God first priority and God will give you first priority in terms of what you need. You cannot give God much and God gives you less. No way. God is faithful. If you give him much, he will give you much more. Wana yesu asifiwe. So we are not free to enjoy idol worship. Any other thing? No, I can talk and talk and talk. Secondly, Christian freedom is not a license for individualistic lifestyle. Verse 23 to 11. Talks of everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. This means there is no room for selfishness among believers. What you do, are you doing for your own benefit? Are you doing for the benefit of others? Do you put yourself first without considering the interest of others? If you do, God is calling upon you to change from that. Because that is selfishness. Hii ndiyo alizungumzia mambo ya kukula nyama. Kula kile kimeweko kwa meza yako. Kula without asking any question. But if you hear somebody come to you, and this case Paul referred to a weak brother. If he tells you this food was offered for idol, for his sake, and for the sake of his concerns. Concerns? No. Conscience. Wanjili ili asisumbuke wachana na hiyo chakula. Wacha kusema no, as long as I'm comfortable, I don't care, I don't care. Kwanza hakuna word kama I don't care kwa vocabulary ya wa Kristo. I don't care. What do you care? You must care. How you dress, you must care. Hakuna my choice my dress. What you eat, what you do, how you talk, the words care about others. And so, you are alive. You should live a life not selfishly, but for the good of others, including how you enjoy your freedom. I want to finish here. Just like our founding fathers, believers, they really fought, they really gave their lives for our freedom, not for their selfish gains. Although we had a few. But mostly was for the good of others. Think of Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. Malim Julius Nyerere Kabarange of Tanzania. Bila kuwacha yule wetu hapa. Mse Jomo Kenyatta. This time, let me focus on one. Nelson Mandela. Perfect example. I said he spent... 27 years in prison for the sake of the South Africans. When he was released, this man was not angry. Angry without hatred. I read somewhere how he never retaliated. He never mistreated those who mistreated him while he was in prison. In fact, one time I read like a story somewhere. He was in a, a restaurant enjoying you know, male, I think he was already a president then. And then he saw a guy he used to meet in, in the prison. And this guy, that's the way the story went. This guy 
used to urinate to him. Imagine. Wewe na mimi ukipata mtu kama huyo na then you have all the powers. What will you do? I know many of us will retaliate, but Mandela never did. He sent for him, come and join us on this table. We hit together. Then the guy was trembling, <laughs> trembling, but Mandela did good. Again, he was president for one term. One term. Not like the leaders we have in Africa. Jamaa kiingia kwa kiti, anabadilisha kila kitu ndiyo akaya for life. Think of our neighbors here. Since 1985. And the Jamaa is moving. Don't we have other citizens who can... Africans, nani ande tulonga? Tulonga. 1985 wale kwa watu hata babako alikuwa shule 1985 was in class 4 i cannot forget this man huyu ambaye angeongoza taifa hili for life na hakuna mtu angempinga i believe for life until he died he only led for one term one term and then aka relinquish and the rest of his life was used to speak to encourage good governance unity of purpose accountability of leaders for public resources and such like things for the good of others for the good of others believe us let us seek to enjoy our freedom let us enjoy it but let us not take it as a license for number one. Let's go. It is not idol worship. Secondly, not a license for individualistic 